um, this made me feel so empathetic to Dina, especially when she talks about having PTSD. So for those that don't know, Dino Manso is Adriana, Teresa's youngest daughter, Adriana. Dina Manso is the godmother of Adriana. Now, Dina and her husband, David, were in New Jersey for Adriana's communion. And when she was in New Jersey, she had a very brutal home invasion where they were beat up, they were tied up. And, um, you know, right after that, she made a permanent move to California. Um, she has stated in many interviews that, you know, she suffers from PTSD because, you know, she's speaking out. People who think that she's speaking out because she wants fame, like, no, she's speaking up because it is a healing process, you know, like when you experience something as violent as she assaulted it like that. And I know because I, I suffer from PTSD. I have childhood traumas that I suffer from. So I know like when she talks about PTSD, it's like a lifetime they, like it, it never goes away like you think about it all the time and like even just watching this video um it made me so emotional because i i i understand through a lot of trauma in the last five you know years that i don't know how it couldn't make a difference in my brain because i feel the difference in my body um obviously my mind i was very sheltered my whole life married my boss my first job when I was 16, he was 12 years older than when we started dating. Um, got married by the time I was 21, had my daughter right away. And, you know, at 28, I woke up and said, I love him, but I'm not in love. I think I just married to get out of the house. My dad had a temper. My grandpa left, um, you know, when he was younger and he was the youngest boy, but he had to become the breadwinner, and, you know, for the family. and started working very young, you know. He did start working young on the docks and have to provide for his mom, who, from what I understand, she died when I was little, was not very nice um, to him, especially. And uh, he had it rough, you know. I, I tell a story how on my first wedding day, my dad lifted my veil. It was the first time he told me he loved me. And I was kind of taken back. I knew he loved me. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm not loved. I knew he loved me, but he never said the words. And in that moment, all I could think about is like, I wonder if his parents ever told him. Like, I was just felt so bad that he, it took him that long to say it, you know. Very old fashioned. We were, the women were bred to be great wives and the boys were bred to be, you know, workers. So I was the first one of the Housewives series to actually quit and leave. Um, That's and then, a sign of intelligent life. Yeah, I thought my piece was more important than any you know, I'm not really- Fame is such a trap. It really is. And I've seen it firsthand how much it changes people. And again, it's nothing I was craving. I'm not driven by it. Um, I appreciate it, especially with my social media following because they've stayed with me all these years. And I feel like we're growing together spiritually because I share everything that I'm learning. And, um, you know, the people who watch the show and resonated with me did for a reason. And I feel like we're still on this, this thing together. And, you know, I love Bravo, but I feel like the people who really love the chaos and the hair pulling and everything are the people who need to hear this stuff the most, because why are you liking that kind of chaos and discord? Like, is it something you're used to? Maybe we could change that, you know? <laughs> So yeah, so I fell into it. I quit. I went and worked for HGTV for a few years doing what I love, had a design show in there. Um, I loved it. Um, it was a lot of work, but I love designing. It's, you know, my food creating. And um, then they asked me to come back and I went back to Bravo for one more year. And uh, that was 2014. And then we wrapped up and I moved to California. Talk about the assault. In 2017, my husband and I, my current husband and I were in New Jersey for an event and we came home to two men in our house who assaulted us and um, zip tied us together. Um, I mean, obviously, 
An event like that is tragic in so many ways, but I have physical injuries, emotional injuries, lingering fear. Um, And I thought I was going to die at one point. So I kind of had a near-death experience where I kind of went through my whole life in a moment, which was a very beautiful moment, oddly enough. It was the most peace I've ever felt. Hmm. Um, But it was a moment where we were tied together and I thought they were just going to shoot us. So I had a moment of just kind of being proud of myself for my accomplishments through my life and grateful to understand true love, my husband Dave, because up until that point, I don't think I did. And I just prayed for my daughter that she would be okay. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. And then they left (laughs) and I was left with that. So that's a lot to have that moment. How long was the whole... Gosh, I don't even know. I don't even know how long it lasted. For me, it was an eternity, but I'm sure it was just a few minutes. There's so many layers to the trauma because not only is what happened um, physically, but emotionally being so sensitive to begin with, but also the emotional part of who was arrested because of it and the healing that I have to do for that. So for all of you Teresa haters who like make such a big deal out of the fact that she is a criminal and a felon, she and her husband went away for basically what it comes down to was that they didn't pay taxes and they also lied on loan applications, okay? To me, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal because look, many people don't pay taxes and many people lie on loan applications. And the reason why they lie on loan application is because they want to get a a higher limit increase or they want to be approved for a loan or they to me that is not something that is a serious crime because look, people who have this energy for Teresa and Joe calling them criminals and felons, like does does Margaret go around saying that to like the politicians in her state? Because New Jersey, let me tell you. There's plenty of politicians in New Jersey who commit worse financial crimes than this. Um, as a matter of fact, Trump, he's notorious for not paying taxes. I think uh, oh, I kind of feel like if people have this kind of energy for like reality TV stars, they should have the same energy for politicians who could directly impact your lives by the laws that they make. Feel like, oh, they're criminals, they're this, they're that. Are you guys checking up on whether your politicians are paying their taxes? Because a lot of them don't. It like a, a lot. I mean, not just politicians, but a lot of people, they claim things that they shouldn't. They take deductions that they shouldn't. And a lot of people don't pay taxes or they, uh, you know, lie on their loan applications or whatever it is, not just, you know, so I, I don't feel that same energy, but also I, I find it really weird that people are calling Teresa and Joe criminals and felons and make such a big deal out of the fact that they didn't pay taxes and lied on their loans. They're like trying to equate that to like them being murderers or rapists or like drug cartels or something, which brings me to Dina. Dina Mansell's, Dina's ex-husband, um, Tommy Manso, he actually got arrested for this. So it's more than just, you know, oh, her saying whatever. Tommy Manso was arrested for being the person who orchestrated the attack against Dina and her husband, David. The guy that uh, did the attack, he was arrested. While he was arrested, he cut a deal with the prosecutors. By the way, if you guys want to do the research, I mean, look it up yourself. I don't feel like making a video to like upload all the documents, but this is stuff that you can find online. This is stuff that you could request from the court through the Freedom of Information Act. Um, the guy that was arrested for the attack. He cut a deal with the DA for a reduced sentence where he basically, I mean, he still got in trouble and he still got sentenced and everything. But basically, he told the prosecutors that, look, Tommy Manso wanted me to do this in return for like, he got a huge discount, like a, a huge discount at the Brownstone for a wedding. Yeah. And um, she was badly beaten up. 
you know, um, I, I know there's like so many people out there saying that like, oh my gosh, she's had so much plastic surgery and blah, 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 blah. But she was beaten up to the point where she had to get reconstructed surgery. I mean, cause when these people are, these people are not going into your house to like beat you up with a slap in the face. These people are using like baseball bats and stuff. Um, and again, look this up. The, there are many articles out there. I don't understand how people have all these have all this hate for Teresa because she didn't pay taxes and because she didn't, you know, and like I I don't understand all this. Like she's a criminal. She's a criminal. But do you people have like that same hate, that same energy for the Mansos? Because Caroline Manso, she comes, she wants to appear as holier than Dow. I think is so fucked up that she would go. And like write a letter on behalf of Tommy Manso to the judge so that he could get bail. Like that that was the thing. Like she wrote a letter so that he could get bail. And then I also thought it was weird that like Caroline Manso would bully Danielle Stop so much when Caroline Manso's father in law was found naked in the trunk of a car. Like, you know, like, like, like mafia style. Like, so Caroline Manso, let's not, you know, let, let's, let's not pretend you're like one of the nuns in a Catholic school or something because your, your family, I mean, the Manso family would probably be more suited on mob wives than, <laughs> than Real Housewife of New Jersey. I mean, and, you know, you guys could look up the information on, um on the manso family that's also available out there uh they ran in the same circle as henry hill um and jo john Gotti. they all knew each other that's another thing like people celebrate victoria Gotti, growing up Gotti, mob wives and like these people have done so much worse than just not pay taxes you know what i'm saying so you people have all this love for um for the cast of mob wives, but then you're bringing this energy to Teresa because she didn't pay her taxes and she, and her husband lied on, you know, bank loans and stuff like that, which I, to this day, I really don't think Teresa knew anything about that. But even besides from that, like you do realize that Melissa Gorga, Miss Envy was like defrauding people with $1,800 fake Chanel bags. Did you people get your refund for that? All you Melissa lovers? I, I hope none of you went shopping at her store and bought any of that fake Chanel bags. But, you know, people are saying, oh, well, we're supposed to believe Teresa. She's a criminal. She's a felon. Look, she didn't pay her taxes. I believe her. I believe her better than somebody who would cheat a customer out of $1,800. I mean, she's basically cheating the IRS. I don't want to pay the IRS taxes either. You know, uh, to me... That is not as significant to me as somebody who is deliberately taking $1,800 knowing that you're selling them a fake product. Like that to me is more of um, a criminal than not paying taxes. But let's move on. Um, I also don't understand how people don't have that same energy for Frank Sr. He got disbarred by New Jersey. Now, when you get to spar, when you get your law license to spar, you go before a panel. That panel has to decide whether or not to disbar you. And it's basically like, it's not just one person who makes that decision. It's, it's a few people who makes that decision. And so all those people have to agree that no, you did something that was so unethical as a lawyer that you're disbarred. You can no longer practice law. So he's no longer a lawyer. He can no longer give legal advice. Like that, that is a huge embarrassment. And the reason why he was disbarred was because he was stealing money from a client. So again, where's this energy? I mean, and, and you could look this up. You don't just get disbarred because you weren't a good lawyer. You don't get disbarred because you didn't win a case. You like, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, oh my God, this lawyer sucks. He, you know, he lost me so much money. But like, you don't get the spar for that kind of stuff. You know, 
you get this bar for something where it's so unethical that it is like criminal, you know, that, that you would get this bar for. He got disbarred because he took money from a client that he shouldn't have been taking, and that was why he was disbarred. Where's all, where's all the hate for that? Because to me, that's more criminal to me than not paying taxes. Like you're, you as a lawyer took money from a client when you shouldn't have. I'd rather you just not pay your taxes. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's another thing because like, isn't, isn't like the Republican party, like all about like defund the IRS, defund the IRS. So like, I, I don't, I don't get it. Like, are, are you, are you for defunding the IRS or are you against a reality TV star that didn't pay the IRS? Like, I, it's, it's, you know, like, choose one, <laughs> like choose one, you know, like if, if you're going to go hard for someone who didn't pay her taxes and who lied on loan apps, then go hard for the lawyer who stole money from a client and got disbarred in New Jersey and is no longer a lawyer, can no longer practice law, can no longer give legal advice. Go hard for the person who is defrauding her customers at her store by taking $1,800 of their money and giving them fake shit. If you're paying $1,800, wouldn't you want it to be real? Aren't you paying it because you have the expectation that this is real? Like, if if you were going to get a fake Chanel back, you could go to Chinatown and get it for $30. You didn't need to go to Miss Envy's store and pay $1,800. Like, you could have went to Chinatown. Like, you know, on Mott Street, there's, like, plenty of stores that would have, like, sold you, like, $20 Chanel handbags. <laughs> I kind of feel like the whole thing with... Dina, people made a big deal out of the fact that Dina didn't go to Teresa's wedding. And here was the thing. Dina has came out and said it, and you could find the video for it. She speaks, and may maybe I'll upload a video for it later. Dina has said in an interview, she wanted to be there to support Teresa, but she has PTSD from her attack. And whenever she goes to New Jersey, it's very triggering. And like her being around like the cast and, and filming is very triggering. And then she had told Teresa that, you know, I'll be there to support you, but I don't think that I want to, to film. And that was the thing because Teresa wasn't sure if she wanted to film the, the special or not. Um, and, and then, you know, like for, for a while it was like, is she or isn't she? And then she decided that she was going to film. And I know Andy was like, oh, well, you know, we, we could have blurred Dina out. Yes, you could have blurred Dina out, but that still doesn't, like, you could have blurred Dina out, but Bravo is not the judge. Like, the, the Bra Bravo Network, NBC Universal, is not like the judici judicial system. They can't issue orders uh, they they can't issue subpo like like they can't tell people in attendance to the wedding don't tell anybody that Dino Manzo is here they can't like you know what i'm saying like they can't control what other people do and the fact is like look it was a very big wedding i think Dina felt like you know there's no way i could be there and she said it herself i have I have PTSD even going to the state of New Jersey. I try to avoid going to New Jersey as much as possible. I do go back to see my father once in a while, but he's, her father passed away not that long ago. So now she has even less reason to go to New Jersey. And she was like, I just don't want to be in New Jersey. I was going to go to New Jersey to celebrate Teresa because she is a dear friend of mine. But when I realized that she was going to be filming her wedding, then you know, I had to put myself first. I didn't want to be a part of it. I think that everybody talks about this big riff and everybody says that, oh, you know, it, it has something to do with Louie and, and David. Dina, Dina has came out and said, no, absolutely not. It has nothing to do with David or Louie. I think the friendship kind of fell apart because Dina pulled out of the wedding and it kind of made Teresa mad. 
Teresa was probably like, well, if you're my friend, you know, you're my, you're, you're my friend, you're my bridesmaid. Like, you know, why, why can't you be in the wedding? You know, bravo. She was probably like, bravo, blur out your face. And, and Dina was probably like, you know, I don't care if bravo blurs out my face. I just cannot be there. Like, can't you understand that as my friend? And Teresa was probably like, well, can't you understand it as my friend that you said you were going to be my bridesmaid? So I don't actually think the falling out is between the men. I think the falling out is the fact that Dina just could not be there. Like she just could not mentally, emotionally be there. And, and for people who say, well, you know, she knew that Teresa's wedding was going to be in New Jersey. Why would she have accepted it in the first place? You know what? You cannot, you cannot say stuff like that because Unless you experience PTSD yourself, you cannot say, well, why didn't she do this? Why shouldn't she do that?